Asbury Park. And the reason, oh, Ernest McBoley, um, Asbury Park, New Jersey, born in Long Branch. Um, I'm still involved in both cities, so that's why I come. Uh, last night, uh, Covenant House from New York uh, partnered with a local developer, a nonprofit developer, and they approved a second, what looks like a home, but actually it houses five people in need, uh, late teen up to 21. And they only had an Asbury for 21 years, uh, for females, for males. So they proposed uh, a while back before the council to add a, another home, just like it looks like a home, uh, and make it for women. And it came up for its final uh, approval last night, and it was granted. So um, knowing both cities, uh, I, I would say any programs like that, and if you keep, keep in mind, I met the uh, man who runs all the government houses, who's from Franklin Lakes, New Jersey, who runs not only New York, but all the New Jersey uh, um, facilities. Uh, he's very interested in cities like Long Bridge and Asbury Park and Neptune, where there are uh, youngsters on the street. And of course, his covenant has both um, mental illness facilities, drug addiction facilities, and sort of social uh, uh, down on the luck facility, which this is the one they they built. Um, so I would just like to apprise you that, and hopefully, maybe you'll consider because Long Branch has a lot of vacant lots, and if you go and inspect what they built, it fits right into the motif of the city block. And, and ultimately, if they ever end the program, it is a zoned exact uh, five bedroom home, zoned for nonprofit use. So that means if they picked up and left, you could sell it as a one family home. So I think that would be good for long term. Um, the other um, issues I wanted to talk about were um, uh, if you read about what's going on with the uh, governor, not the governor, the attorney general, um, he's finding in, uh, since there's only two cities in Monmouth County, Long Branch and uh, Asbury Park, one has about 30,000, the other has, I think, 15, um, that um, it's time for Citizens Review Board to come back. They're usually volunteer. They're usually made up of the community. And, and what helps is, like, you know, you have nice meetings like this where you give an employee awards, and then we want to get into the thick of money and argue it. It, it, it doesn't really fit, although it's important. You know, sometimes it, it, it's important. So uh, with a citizen review board, there's like another venue for citizens to come in, be represented, and the city to be represented, and we can kind of get into it without you know, feeling like we're being uh, not nice to each other, which well, it's not the case anyway, but um, it could appear that way to someone riding by that this is uh, an antagonistic meeting. I don't think it is, right? Okay. So. Uh, so that, that would, and, and the other thing is, uh, there's an old position that some municipalities used to use. It's usually done on a volunteer basis. And it usually comes with a city employer, someone who's considered an elder and lot, very knowledgeable of that city. And it's called an ombudsman. And we know it from university. They have one at the Superior Court, et cetera, et cetera. An ombudsman is basically a volunteer person who works whatever they want to, flexible hours, they have an office in the city, and it's a place where citizens or anybody, residents, can deposit problems, like you can't sleep 6.30 in the morning here. Well, you call the ombudsman, the ombudsman and their group then start to filter it to Mr. Zuba, to the mayor, whatever. And it kind of gets things done, and that's an opportunity that you might want to think about. Um, the other thing is, um, I agree with some of the other people. We've got to do something about the Long Branch Police Department. The numbers are staggering. I mean, you've, you've locked up four or five in the last few years. They're getting arrested for drunk driving, out of control violence, etc. Um, 